shall now take you to what would be the last time you get to see some truly giant ocean predators. It is about 9 million years ago during the late Miocene and the waters of what is now Peru. The continuing cooling trend that started 25 million years earlier at the end of the Eocene that caused Antarctica to freeze over has led to currents bringing cool nutrient-rich waters up north along the Pacific coast of South America. The water still remains fairly warm, however, especially near the shore, which will one day be north of the driest place on Earth, the Atacoma. This does explain how even banded penguins swim in these waters, but crocodilians like the gharial like Sakako Sukis inhabit these waters too. Sakako Sukis itself is able to grow to about 14 feet in length, while another gavialid that inhabits these waters called Pisco gavialis can grow to almost twice its size at around 25 feet long. The cetaceans that inhabit these waters include the Pontiporidae called Brachydelphus. It happens to be capable of catching its prey through suction feeding. Another being Acrophysetter, which grows to between 13 to 15 feet long, making it the smallest raptorial sperm whale found. Its short snout and curved front teeth allow it to hunt much of a large prey in its environment. This includes dolphins, seals, and seabirds. Further out into open waters where even bigger predators lurk still, which include none other than the biggest and most famous prehistoric shark as well as possibly one of the biggest predators of all, Megalodon. The Megalodon could usually grow to a length of between 50 to 60 feet, but it has been suggested it could be even bigger, at 80 feet. This allows it to rule the world's oceans except at the poles by being mostly found in the subtropics and tropics as well as also being found in temperate water. Flying above the water is the largest flying bird yet found, Pelagornis, which has a wingspan of between 19 to 24 feet. Not since when pterosaurs flew over the heads of dinosaurs and over these waters, while they were inhabited by large marine reptiles, had any flying animal approached the size it does. Hunts for fish in these waters alongside a pinniped called Piscophoca. There is also a small baleen whale that is a member of a group called Cetophiridae, called Piscobalina. But however, they not only have to worry about Megalodon, there is another super predator that shares these waters that is just as deadly. It is a macroraptorial sperm whale called Liviaton. It is usually able to grow to about 45 feet. Though still not as big as Megalodon, it could still get to be at least 57 feet in length. Unlike modern sperm whales that only have teeth and their lower jaw that they use for sucking up giant squid, Liviaton possesses them in both jaws, which it uses to bite off large chunks of flesh from its prey. Pelagornis got lucky escaping Liviaton this time. Even if near the coast, it has to worry about Pisco Gavialis. But thankfully, it mostly specializes in hunting small, swift moving fish, rather than other large animals like Pelagornis. The Pelagornis, therefore, is able to safely hunt for fish in these very shallow waters compared to out in the open ocean. This pregnant Megalodon mother is heading up north to a nursery in what is now Panama, but even a predator as massive and as 
fear, says Megalodon, when in labor, has to be wary of potential attackers, especially from these two young Leviathan, who have now seized their chance to make an easy meal out of their usual competitor. I pick you up, stuck into a turn. The Megalodon has made it after a tough bout, but has suffered some injuries, but she will still be able to give birth. The Liviaton is now about to sneak up on Episcobalina. This was the time for the last chance to see some true ocean super predators. <laughs> 